it's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So today's, today's quick tip uh, is in regards to tracheostomies for someone that is not on a ventilator with risk for aspiration because they are unable to swallow. So the, the reason I'm recording this video is that we are working with a client currently who has their loved one in LTAC in the US. And as I have been saying over and over again for the last 10 years, LTACs are unsafe to look after ventilated or tracheostomy patients. And I think I've got more evidence for that today because of what we are experiencing or what our client is experiencing currently with their father in LTAC. So here's the situation. Their father managed to get off the ventilator, but uh, still needs the tracheostomy. Apparently, he did not pass the swallow test and therefore he's at risk for aspiration. So then when consulting with the client, I said, okay, well, if he's at risk of aspiration, what tracheostomy does he have? And you know, the client said that her dad has a size six, six tracheostomy with a cuff. So then I said, well, so therefore the cuff must be up because she said, well, sometimes he's also using the speaking valve in order to say a few words or a few sentences. Well, here's the bottom line. If someone is at risk of aspiration because they can't swallow, the cuff needs to be up. Okay, now let me illustrate that. And therefore I actually show you a tracheostomy in this video. Hopefully I can show it to you. There it is. So I brought a tracheostomy so I can illustrate that to you. So here is the tracheostomy. You can see at the tip there, there's a trache, there's the balloon. Okay, so let me show this to you. If this is the trachea and the tracheostomy sits there, if the cuff is down and he, here, here is the mouth, if the cuff is down and someone swallows and the cuff is down, they will aspirate and they will trigger an aspir it will trigger an aspiration pneumonia. So therefore for anyone that's off the ventilator but has swallowing issues, the cuff needs to be up. So let me show you this. I'll just put the cuff up so you can actually see that what's happening next. So, oops, you can see when I'm inflating the cuff, now the cuff goes up and that will stop a patient from aspirating if they have excess saliva and all patients do have that. So, there's also research out there to illustrate what I'm saying. I will link the research below this video that anyone who has a tracheostomy but can't swallow needs the, the cuff up. Otherwise, they'll be ending up on the ventilator again because they end up with an aspiration pneumonia. Again, to confirm what I'm saying, I will attach a research paper to this video so you can actually see um, what the research about that is. So, But then again, it confirms everything that I've been saying for the last 10 years about LTACs in the US, that they're not equipped to look after patients with a tracheostomy or a ventilator. They don't even know the mechanics around a tracheostomy. Okay, so that is my quick tip for today. You know, and also to illustrate this even more, you know, with intensive care at home, with our service intensive care at home, uh, we are looking after patients at home with a tracheostomy as well. And if patients have swallowing issues and they are not ventilated, they always have tracheostomies with a cuff and that cuff needs to be up at all times, right? The exception here is for pediatrics, for children. Uh, pediatric tracheostomies don't have a cuff um, and the airway is sealed anyway because children have a much narrower airway. So that is the exception. But for adults with swallowing issues, they always need to have a cuffed tracheostomy, just as I showed you a minute ago. Um, and if you are looking for intensive care at home services, you know, because you have a tracheostomy or you are on a ventilator, you should be going to intensivecareathome.com for more information there. We are currently serving all capital cities and all regional and remote areas in Australia. Um, and you should be going to intensivecareathome.com for more information. We are also coming to the US very soon. Go and check out intensivecareathome.com. That is my quick tip for today. If you have a loved one in intensive care, go to intensivecarehotline.com. Call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website or simply send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com. 
with your questions. Also, have a look at our membership for families in intensive care at intensivecaresupport.org. There you have access to me and my team 24 hours a day in the membership area and via emails. And we answer all questions, intensive care and intensive care at home related. I also provide one-to-one -one consulting and advocacy for families in intensive care. I talk to doctors and nurses directly. I can also represent you in family meetings, for example. And again, if you need long-term care at home for tracheostomy, ventilation, long-term ICU, please go to intensivecarehome.com and find more information there. If you need a medical record review in real time, uh, if you have a loved one in intensive care and you want a second opinion in real time, please contact us as well. We also provide medical record reviews after intensive care, uh, especially if you have unanswered questions, if you need closure, or if you are simply suspecting medical negligence, please contact us as well. Now, subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care. Share the video with your friends and families, click the like button, click the notification bell, and comment below what you want to see next and what questions and insights you have from this video. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and intensivecareathome.com, and I will talk to you in a few days. Take care.